Paul. Paul never boasted in himself, did he, James? Paul never bragged on himself. But Paul made people desire what they got. When he stood before Agrippa, Agrippa said, Paul, you're, you're permitted to speak for yourself. He said, I think myself happy. Can you imagine Agrippa? Can you imagine Agrippa, Josh? This, this guy's getting nuts. We're going, we're going to execute him. And he's happy. I was talking to Brother J.J. <clears throat> this weekend, and uh, he said, Richard, all you got to shout on the telephone, you got to praise in the Lord. He said, I have people ask me all the time for some drugs. And J.J. won't, won't, you know, he won't try to hide it. Years ago, he had his... Uh, Marty's back there laughing. Uh, we was there, wasn't we? He, he, he lived that life. But what I'm saying, he said, now, he said, man, they, they come up to me and want to buy it. And you know, want me to share. And he said, I tell them, say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I, I don't do that no more. <coughs> I'm not into that. They said, don't lie to me. Don't lie to me. And can't nobody be that happy and be that energetic and not be on drugs. I said, JJ, I had the same thing to happen to me. You know, I, I, you was out there and, and it just cause you're happy, they think you had some help being happy. And I did have help being happy. Uh, JJ and another guy, uh, won't mention his name, was, was behind the coal truck they had stopped to block the road and to put off a shot they were standing behind well old dumb me i jumped they'd been standing there a little while behind this truck and i thought uh i didn't know them and i thought i'd get out to talk to them and when i walked up on them they jumped and turned their back and i thought man i must really be ugly and and so anyways I got to talking to them, got to tell them about Jesus. Y'all was here, it wasn't two Sundays to JJ and his wife come through the door. That's been 12 or 15 years ago. And now he's telling everybody how good Jesus is. I'm telling you what, the world is strange to them, James, as you would teach it. Did you enjoy that teaching this morning? Uh, but anyways, I, I was telling JJ the other day, I said, they, they, I said, I've told the story several times about that little girl running around that shack in a raggedy, raggedy little dress and, and barefooted man, <coughs> half of the windows was knocked out of the house. And Brother Roger used to say she'd run around that house and Roger would just cry when he'd tell a story and said, I'm happy, happy, happy. Said somebody come down the road and they stopped her and say, you ain't really happy, are you? Oh yeah, I'm happy, happy, happy. And somebody else come down the road and said, you, ain't, you couldn't really be happy no more than you got. Oh yes, I am. I'm happy, happy, happy. And finally somebody said, well, just tell us why you're happy. She said, well, you can look at this place, our home, it ain't much. But you can also look up on the hill of that mansion up there. That man up there, my daddy's worked two for years and worked four for years and said, my daddy come home yesterday with a wheel to that mansion up there. That man says when he dies, my daddy and his whole family, that includes me, can go to that mansion up there on the hill. I'm happy, happy, happy. She said, and the person said, how do you know you get to do? She said, like I told you, my daddy's got the wheel. He's got the paper. Bless God forever, church. We got the wheel. We can be happy, happy, happy. We got it on paper. That we, we may not look like much right now. Just we may not have much. But thank God I got the wheel. I don't know when like that little girl, but it's going to happen one of these days. I'm going to get to go to that mansion.
affliction on the hand. That's the way Paul was. Folks couldn't couldn't explain. They couldn't they couldn't figure Paul out because Paul. Listen, the word of God says. Now, just think about this. This is simple. The word of God says. If in this life only we have hope. In speaking in layman's terms, if all of our hope is in this life, the Word of God says, went on to say, we're of men most miserable. So in layman's terms, if our hope, all the hope we got is in what this life can give us, we're miserable. Amen. Amen. I don't have to explain it to you. You will say, I know what you're talking about, preacher. All the bills may be paid. Everybody might have got a clean bill of health from the doctor. But I'm telling you what, if your hope is not in the Lord, you still can't be happy. And you still can't have peace. And there's only, the only, the song I wrote that song, the only real peace that I have, dear Lord, is in you. Brother Josh and Jessica and Kennedy would come, get, get a song ready. I don't know the need of hearts this morning, but you do. Each individual one knows the need of their own heart. <coughs> I don't know your burden, maybe, but God does. You may think preacher, maybe, and, and some people think the preacher's got all the answers. And a lot of y'all found out, boy, that ain't the truth. At least our pastor ain't. But they think, you know, the preacher's the only one that really knows what's going on. The uh, preacher's the only one that can get a prayer through. And all of you know, if you don't know, you will know that that's not true. God listens to each one the same. But anyways, you may say, Preacher, if I, I, I just had somebody to talk to, somebody to share with, it may help and it may not. But I'll tell you what good help and true help comes through and by the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. How many can say amen to that? If you're here this morning and you're unsaved or you're viewing, you say, Preacher, I, I've been blessed. I, I, I know I've been blessed. But I still don't have that peace. I still don't have that joy. You can have it this morning. I will be the first one to tell you when you get saved, don't remember, don't mean that you'll be picked up placed on a hallelujah cloud, and you'll just glide along to heaven. It don't happen that way. Even though we're saved, we're still in this life. We'll have problems, we'll have burdens, we'll have worries, we'll have cares. But one thing about being saved, we got somebody by our side, don't we, Jesus? Yeah. Somebody we can say, hey, yeah. mm, I need help. I need help. If you're here this morning and you say, hey, I need help, you can find help. Every head bowed as they play softly. Every eye closed to Christians is praying. I ask this morning. I know the Lord's been here in a mighty way. If by chance there's someone in the building that's unsaved, you would have to agree. I felt the presence of God in this place. You viewed by live stream, I've witnessed it. I know it's not the same as being in the building. But this past Wednesday night, as I sat up there in the campground, viewing the service on Wednesday evening, I felt the power of God through the service. And I know without a shadow of a doubt, the Lord has touched somebody this morning and spoke to somebody. Somebody can have peace and somebody can have forgiveness and somebody can have joy this morning if they'll do their part. There's a part that each one of us has to do and that's 
the word of God says that we must confess our sins. You say, preacher, you mean I got to get up and make my sins public? No, sir. It wouldn't do you a bit of good if you'd done that. But if you confess your sins to the Father and let him know that you're sorry and you regret the wrong that you've done. The Word of God said if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Zach taught ministered Wednesday night. We can go to some man and we can tell, tell him over and over how wrong we've done. And that won't give us forgiveness. But Lord, if we cry out to you because we've sinned, when we sin, we sin against you and against heaven. And I pray right now, Lord, that you would give somebody the courage. If they're in the building, they would slip out of their seat. Lord, if they feel they can't make it to the altar, they will cry out to you right where they are. Help them right now to say, Lord, forgive me. Lord, help me. Lord, save me. I believe that you died on the cross of Calvary for my sins, and I'm claiming my right to heaven this morning. Pray that prayer. Pray it from your heart, and you can be set free as they sing. Oh, Paul.